Hello everyone, Seraphin here, welcome back for more Mega Man X4. When I last left you guys, we had finished up with all eight of the Maverick bosses, and we also finished collecting all of the items that there is to get. So we are moving on to the last phase of the game, that being the uh, fortress stages that typically follow all the Maverick bosses, the first one being the spaceport. And as Zero mentioned when, at the end of our last episode, uh, Colonel is launching, or is attempting to launch into space, so we have to stop him. Why he wants to launch into space, I don't understand yet, but we'll get to that point when we get there. Uh, yeah, Alright, well, that didn't work out so well, now did it. Trying to be a little too careful, and I end up falling into a pit instead. Alright, you guys with the bombs here need to, like, lay off. It's not cool. There we go. So, what does Colonel want to do in space? Well, there's a reason for it. We'll get to that as soon as we get toward, more toward the end of this level, I suppose. Uh, if you recall, last time, too, we got um, the Shapuga from Storm Owl, and that just turned my saber purple. i got to be honest, I liked the green one better, but you know what? I guess you can't have everything you want. Uh, speaking of Zero's Beam Saber, uh, I've come to understand something that I previously was unaware of. Uh, it is not actually ever explicitly stated that Zero obtains his Beam Saber from Sigma in X1. Uh, it's not actually confirmed that is the case. It is a popular speculation, but it is not officially confirmed in the canon. So, when I have said numerous times that that's where Zero got it from, it's not strictly true. It's not necessarily false either, but since we have no way to corroborate it officially, then I'm not going to pretend that it's the officially recognized canon of the story, I suppose. Would you stop with this? Man, I hate these things so much. I also don't remember having this much trouble getting through this level. I'm already almost dead. That being said, we're moving into a boss gate that I'm probably going to fail immediately because I have almost no health left. So, that being said, who'll be here? As you might have imagined, it is Colonel himself who makes an interesting entrance. With his awesome, or more awesome beam saber, I think. I think Colonel's is cooler. I can't let you through. Iris will be sad if sh if I if you lose to me. Well, show me what you've got. I also have no idea why Colonel is Australian. Nothing wrong with being Australian, I suppose. It's just confusing. Oh, jeez. All right. Well, that didn't take very long, did it? At any rate, uh, you'll notice that Iris has, like, an English accent, but Colonel is Australian. I don't quite understand why that is. They're supposed to be siblings. Or something. Uh, by the way, something else that I've always thought was interesting is how do robot siblings actually show work? You, no mercy. Now get ready. you will show me no mercy. So he says. You gotta be careful with Colonel. He's uh, He hurts quite a bit if you're not careful. Now he does this nonsense where he shoots lightning out of the ground. He'll do this attack quite a bit, where he flings three bur be er, bursts out of his sword, rather. And then he'll immediately retreat to one side. If he's retreating to one of the sides all the way, that usually means he's about to use that lightning attack that he just used. After he does the slash here real quick. If he doesn't do that, then he's probably just going to stand there and repeat his pattern from... Oh, jeez. You know, he's really good at dodging that. I'm mean, just not anymore. Fortunately, I'm quite rusty at this game, as you can see here, so... Ow, that was stupid. I knew it was coming, too. That's the worst part. Apparently, I just need to play this game more often, because I just am terrible at it now. That's alright. At any rate, um, again, I don't understand the, quite the concept of robot siblings. Because they're robots, they don't have siblings. The nice thing is that when he dashes like that, he actually dashes through you and does not hurt you. So you can stand on the ground safely and allow him to dash through you and it won't hurt you. Whoa, that was close. And here comes the Slash. So yeah, if you were playing X, you would have had to fight him in that little intermediary bit after fighting four Mavericks, after beating four Mavericks, rather. And this is the same fight. Uh, it's just a little bit toned down. The three bursts he fires out of his sword are not quite as fast when X fights him in the little interlude bit. Ground Crush. That's the move he gets when he gets below half health, I think. Now he, do, now he does that slash attack twice in a row. And then he does the lightning thing again. Colonel is actually a very popular character in the Mega Man canon. 
largely because this is not the only time that we see him. He actually does make appearances in the Battle Network series. Specifically, I think, in Battle Network 5 and 6. Maybe one of the other ones, I don't know for sure. But at any rate, uh, that is Colonel Down. It was a... Uh, I figured him out about halfway through, as you can see, though. So. Not that I didn't already know how to fight him, I just was rusty. At any rate, so, we've defeated Colonel. Apparently he's saying it's too late. Repliforce has left for space. Even if I perish, Repliforce lives. He died happily. Something tells me he's not necessarily happy to be dying. Just he's happy that he went out the way he did, I guess. So yeah, that's Colonel. And he's gone. And Iris is no doubt going to be not very pleased about that. So, at any rate, let us save and move on to the second part of the final stages here. The way I understand it, by the way, with regards to robot siblings, when, at least when it comes to Colonel and Iris, is that they were actually initially formed as one robot, like one processing unit. Scramble all Maverick Hunters, and Iris is gone. Apparently she left with them. The way that it works, though, from what I understand, at least on what I've what research I've done, is that Iris and Colonel were initially one robot pro like brain, especially specifically, and then they were separated into two different personality tr uh, profiles, so to speak. Colonel being the the prideful, you know, stubborn, ba like battle hardened one, and Iris being the gentle, peace loving one. So it was it's technically the same psyche split into half, and that's how they justify the fact that they're siblings. Because obviously robots don't have siblings necessarily, because they're not born the same way. And anyway, so we are on the final weapon. This is the, it's, as it mentions, it's the final stage of the game. It's broken into three different parts. So this is the first area. Technically four if you think about it, but this first area has a boss. And yeah. What is that thing she's holding, you might be asking. You fought with my brother, she says. Then it's over. Oh boy. Well, she's breaking up with us just because we killed her brother? Man. Women, right? I'm just kidding. So she has this crazy purple ball artifact thingy that grants her uber armor. Looks like ride armor with wings. Forgive me, Zero. Yeah, but you didn't forgive us for killing your brother, so why should I have to forgive you? Here's the fun thing about fighting Iris, is that when you attack her robot body here, it doesn't actually hurt her. You have to attack the purple diamond that the source of her power is contained within. Just attacking her body just releases these little gray uh, X thingies that are just getting your way. They don't actually do anything, they're just there to be annoying. So yeah, you want to try to push back her body as much as you can to get it out of the way, and then attack the, the diamond when you have the chance to. And then avoid that crossways beam attack when she does it. Unfortunately, Iris is actually fairly easy. This is not a difficult fight. That move is really easy to dodge as long as you're careful, and she goes down with only getting hit once or twice, so. I guess I wouldn't expect a battle against a robot that's not designed for combat to be all that difficult, but again, I don't know where she got that, that gem or that power from. Hang in there, Iris. Please, stay away from Repliforce. Let's live together. In a world where only Reploids exist. Iris, there's no world just for Reploid. It's only a fantasy. Yes, I know, but I wanted to believe it. I wanted to live in a world where only Reploids exist with you. Iris! 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 Ah! No, this isn't happening! There's no reason for me to go on! What? What am I fighting for? Yep, so that happened. So, not only did Zero kill Colonel, he just killed the love of his life, and the voice acting was atrocious, and 
I mean, I guess my voice like, might be a little atrocious too if I was in a really fragile emotional state, but at the same time, it's like, really? Come on. That was just bad. Some of you were expecting that particular, uh, that, or have heard that particular cutscene in Ainer, that voiceover. Yeah, it's it's that bad. It's, it's really bad. So here, I think, don't quote me on this, is a, nope, never mind, not yet. This right here is a route split, so we can go one of two ways here. We can either go forward through this gate, or we can go down through this pit here. I prefer to go up through the top part here. Uh, your mileage may vary. This part's a little more difficult for X to get through, because X does not have a double jump. But this particular route is a little bit easier for Zero to get through. Because he can double jump over these spike walls and not get hit by them. The problem is there's these giant beam cannon thingies still, so... Uh, X will generally prefer to take the bottom path, but Zero has no problem taking the top one. Uh, that being said, both of the paths do end up re reuniting right here at this point, and we move into the second boss of the final weapon area. That being the only Ripple Force person we haven't actually fought yet. Yep. And he's freaking massive. And he blows his chair up. I don't understand the need to blow up your chair, dude. Like, come on. Independence always has a high price. Well, I mean, if you just admitted that you weren't Mavericks, then it wouldn't have been all been happening. Show me your true power. So, General, as you can see here, is absolutely freaking enormous. And he also shoots his hands out as platforms that you can jump on, and you need that because his only weak spot is his head. So you need to get up close and personal with his face to get to him, and he also shoots these pulses out of his hands, or his where his hands used to be, I guess. And I'm failing miserably right now because I'm forgetting how to act or how to appropriately fight this guy. Oh wow, I actually forgot about it. I forgot he did that, the stomping move there. The problem is, too, is you have to take your hits where you can take them, because it's not easy to land hits on General. Especially as Zero. X will have a much easier time with... Oh, jeez. Well, okay, apparently I'm just terrible at this. I, I gotta get my groove back in here. It's been a little while since I've played this, so we're gonna pick that up again. So the best way to hit him, I've found, apart from climbing on his hands on, as platforms to get to his head and trying to dodge those blue pulses as best you can is to stay on the walls and jump over him, or dash jump over him, as he's moving from one side of the room to the other. It was our destiny to fight. And then you can slash him in the head along the way over. So, let's see if I can pull this off here. Nope, apparently I'm capable of dash jumping while I'm on a wall for some reason. Why am I not able to dash jump all of a sudden? I, yeah, okay, something's not right. I, my controls are not working here. I can't dash jump when I'm supposed to be able to. I have no problem doing it when I'm on the ground, but off the wall here, it's not working. <clears throat> Something is screwy here. I'm just gonna slash at his face here a little bit. I'm gonna attempt to avoid these blue pulsy thingies as I walk right into one. Do I have energy tanks right now? I didn't fill them, did I? No, I did not. I did not bother to fill my energy tanks, folks. Because I was so confident in my ability to take this guy down in one round that I didn't bother to fill my freaking energy tanks. Problem is, too, is the blue flame behind the little jets behind his hands do hurt you. So you gotta be careful of that. If I get hit again, I'm dead. Yep, there we go. Alright, well, I gotta figure out why I can't dash jump off the wall all of a sudden. Let's see if I can... See, I can do it in here just fine, I just can't do it in the freaking boss room. That's bizarre. I wonder... No, that wouldn't make any sense. Sorry, I'm talking to myself now. So, the idea is to dash jump off the wall when he's moving toward you, but again, I'm having issues with that for some reason. My fate is sealed. I have no choice. He says he has no choice. I don't necessarily know that I believe him. I suppose I don't necessarily need to dash jump over. I probably could just double jump. But... Ow, you jerk. These pulses are a little harder to dodge than they look. I know they don't move very fast, but the fact that they home on you a little bit is really irritating. Come on, dude. 
You know, I could just double jump over him and do that. Okay, that works. I don't need to actually dash jump. Although, the dash jumping is a little bit more effective, I think. Yep, because then I run into his, his back jets. Okay, I got him that time. He's not terribly... Di like, he, does he doesn't take a lot of hits to kill. I did it that time. But I still jumped into his back jets. He's not... He doesn't take a lot of kills to... Or, a lot of hits to kill. It's just a matter of dodging him and getting out of his way. Alright. I'm doing alright now, I guess. Nope. Then hit I keep hitting the back jets. I'm not timing this right. That's another problem I'm having right now. Now, again, if I was double jumping, this wouldn't be an issue. Or, dash jumping, rather. But because that's not working properly... Oh, jeez, I forgot about that move, too. And he kills me. Alright, well, tell you what, we're going to continue on. And by continue on, I mean we're going to have to wait to do it next time, because I really don't want to have to deal with this just yet again. So, we will resume and hopefully be able to take down General accurately in the next episode. So, until that time, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you're enjoying my failures. They will be in abundance, unfortunately, until I figure this out. So, that being said, until I see you next time, this has been Seraphin. Stay classy, internets.